Hey my village, again it's your coach Mo back with another video. Today's topic is you can't co-parent because dot dot dot. So a lot of people are not going to like this but y'all know me, I do not sugarcoat, I come with how it is. <laughs> because being a parenting coach, I see so many different things and I used to be a lot of these things where I used to have all those excuses as to why I can't co-parent, why, why, why. And I always say it's just excuses, as it really is. Um, you can't do it because you don't want to. <laughs> but don't forget to like, share, and subscribe because a lot of people need to hear this or tag some people that you know need to hear this. Send them the link, whatever you gotta do. But I appreciate you guys' viewings and your support. So the first reason why people can't co-parent is because they want to control everything. So I'm going to just list a few things. It's control, they're hurt, bitter, resentful, and selfish. But I'm going to tell you why. Because <laughs> I'm not going to leave y'all hanging with just that. Because the video will be over in less than two minutes. So... You're, you can't co-parent because you're not healed. A lot of parents, especially women, moms, believe me, I used to be one of them. And for someone who teach people how to co-parent <laughs> successfully, I see this all the time. Uh, when I have to dig deeper to see why is it that you can't co-parent. Because believe it or not, mostly men reach out to me for my co-parenting program, co-parent like a boss where I teach parents over about eight week period how to co-parent and coexist in their child's life. So kids deserve to have both parents in their life, but it's always usually one person stopping the other parent from being able to be a part of coexisting. Um, and it's usually because they're still hurt. They put their feelings before the child. So it's not about the child, it's about them. <laughs> but the child is suffering and being punished for them not willing to heal and basically see their fault in the whole situation and that it's not about them, it's about the child. So a lot of times they're like, well, he hurt me and he did this, or even like especially in abusive uh, like relationships, domestic violence, well, he put his hands on me. I don't want him to be around my kid. And I always ask, did he hit the kid? No. Did he hurt the kid? No. So it was you. <laughs> So why can't they be a father? Just because you guys didn't work out don't mean the kids and them going to work out. Not going to work out. But I always try to get people to understand that. Um, he hurt you, not the kids, but you're hurting the kids by not letting them see the other parent. Um, being alienated and neglectful, like, it's not acceptable. So heal yourself. I always say fix it, Jesus. <laughs> You need uh, to forgive. It's not you that should be punishing the person. I always leave it to God. God can punish people far, fast, way faster than we can. So you need to get yourself together. You need to heal. And you'll be able to coexist and co-parent with forgiveness, with healing, and fixing you first. Um, you cannot co-parent when you're coming from a broken place. Because you're damaging your kids. Period. They don't need to be around around an unhealed person and I always tell people that like how courts don't work um, when it comes to custody because most of the time they give the kid to the mom and that might be the toxic parent <laughs> but a laws are not equal when it comes to men getting custody over the woman um, but that child can be left with the toxic person and be damaged for life because that person won't heal and they're bitter and resentful um, another reason why you can't co-parent because you want control over the other parent. You cannot tell the other parent how to be a parent. Period. I don't care who you are. You don't have that authority over another person. Period. And you just have to get over it. You parent the way you want to parent. They parent the way they want to parent. Because who's to say the way you're parenting is correct or the better way? You might be the toxic parent that the kid is stuck with, as I mentioned before. <laughs> so 
you keeping them from the other parent is not good parenting. So you have to see it from both sides and let people be who they can be. So we don't have a manual as to how to be a parent. It just something that you learn and you pray and you um, create your village and you do whatever you can with whatever you got to make it happen, to make it work and pray that your child turned out good. But if you damage them early, you're screwing them up for later in adulthood where it would impact them the most. Um, another reason you can't co-parent because you won't let go of that fantasy. So a lot of parents, I never really been that person where I was like, oh, I'm going to be this type of mother. I'm going to have this many kids, be married. Um, I'm going to have like a big house, a big family. I never really been that dreaming of a wedding, none of that. <laughs> Um, but people can't co-parent because things didn't turn out the way they wanted to in their fantasy way of thinking. Oh, I was supposed to be married when I had kids. Okay, it didn't happen, so adjust. <laughs> Everything is not going to happen the way you dreamed or imagined or prayed for. Things happen. I wasn't married or even in a relationship when I had my son with my best friend. <laughs> so... It was not traditional, but we made it work. We learned how to coexist and raise our kids so that he can have a better life and experience with his parents um, than most people get the opportunity to have. So just because your fantasy didn't work or that person is not like your dream person to have a kid with, I didn't plan on having a kid with my best friend <laughs> but I planned on being in a relationship I wanted like I wanted a traditional home but I was in like set in stone I just went with whatever happened I wasn't going to be like oh you got to marry me no <laughs> we weren't even in a relationship we never been in a relationship so like that fantasy would never happen because we didn't do anything tra um, traditionally but you get those people like trying to turn the person that they wind up having a baby with into the fantasy person that that person don't even know they're living up to those expectations like it's so crazy that people would make up a person in their mind and they're like my kid father is supposed to be like this and do this and do that and that person don't even know they're living up to those expectations it's really a shame i hear it all the time and they're like well why didn't you tell me that's what i'm living up to <laughs> you never expressed to me the dream life you imagined having when you had a kid they don't even know because we don't communicate <laughs> what our expectations are because things happen so backwards then it's like they're stuck mentally it's a mental issue like they're really stuck in that fantasy world they're not the mother they dreamed of being so it's like how could you expect another person to be the uh, imaginary person you have in your head uh, when you're not even living up to your own expectations but that's a whole nother story, another video. But um, another reason why you can't co-parent is because you can't see past the hurt that the other person has caused you. That's all a part of healing. Um, you have to let it go. You have to learn to live with your reality because it's not gonna, it's not gonna, you can't change the past, period. That's just not possible. We can't go back to the future, <laughs> uh, back to the past to change it, to make a better future. But you can go from here going forward, which is what a life coach usually help you do is get unstuck, move forward. Forward advancement is good. Um, you can't co-parent because you're listening to other people's opinion. Woo. Now this is the part that's gonna ruffle some feathers to some people. Stop listening to your family. <laughs> I'm going to be the one to tell you those are generational curses, rebirthing, and reliving. You not go to anyone in your family to ask for advice when they ain't even done it themselves. When you got a bunch of single moms in your family and then you the only one that was with the person when you had a baby and y'all trying to work it out and you asking them for advice and they tell you, oh, I wouldn't deal with that, leave and Don't do it. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, don't do it. Don't set yourself up for failure because they ain't did it right and they bitter, resentful baby mamas <laughs> as well. Please don't do it. 
unless you have wise women that's married that have successful relationships um have raised kids that turned out good because <laughs> that's another thing i would never listen to someone who had had sons like me i have a son so if you have sons and i see your sons in jail i see your sons on drugs i see your sons ain't doing nothing with their life i'm not gonna listen to you <laughs> What could you teach me that you ain't never did or learn how to do? Like, I can't. <laughs> Don't let the generational curse continue. You reach out to outside professional help. Period. Or keep whatever going on inside your household. Y'all work together and y'all go to therapy. Whatever you got to do, family therapy. Therapy is good. Hire a coach, therapy, mentor, whatever you got to do. But do not revert to listening to other people's opinion who ain't got it right themselves period <laughs> um also you can't co-parent because you cannot communicate you have to tell the person what you want in order for them to know <laughs> like i have people be like well i thought he knew that or i told him that 20 years ago <laughs> Or when we first met, men don't listen that much. They don't take notes sometimes when it comes to certain things like that. It could just be simple pillow talk and they just ready to get some action. You could tell them all this stuff. They're not listening. You got to remind them. You really have to remind them of how you feel. You have to express how you feel. Don't hold it in, ladies. Because most of y'all, just like I used to do, hold it in and then it just explode and come out in all the wrong ways. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Because then sometimes it come out the wrong way in front of your child. You don't want that that trauma um, to put that onto your child. So learn to communicate. So a uh, resolution for communicating, um, like me and my son, dad, what we did was we had a hash out day where we just hashed everything out, throw everything on the table, tell me however you feel, whatever nobody get mad nobody be in their feelings also we had to learn each other's love language we know that we cannot email we cannot have a serious conversation via text message because we misinterpret what the other person is saying because when you're interpreting something someone's seeing you that you have to read it's going to come from your negative mindset or however you feel about them at that time if you had an argument with them that day everything gonna be negative that you read it could be the most positive, inspiring message, but you're going to take it in a whole different way because of your mindset. So we know we cannot text, we cannot email. We have to talk in person or video chat, like FaceTime or something, or by phone. You need to hear my emotions or you need to see my body language, that I'm genuine and I'm not coming at you in the wrong way so that nobody can miscommunicate what the other person is saying. So you need to learn your form of communication which is one thing that i teach parents how to do what's your uh, love language because sometimes you're not speaking to them via their love language um my son dad know my love language is words of affirmation i need to hear that i'm being doing a good job like oh you're a good mom i appreciate all the hard work you're doing raising him while you're in another part of the country like i need to hear that because then i won't feel appreciated I'll feel like you're taking advantage of me doing everything on my own, but you have to express how you feel. You have to tell them how you want them to communicate with you in order for it to go right. You cannot co-parent without communication, period. It would never work. You will always argue. You have to set those expectations up front. Um, another one is, <laughs> Now this one, <laughs> um, another reason why you can't co-parent is because you are so focused on who the other person is with, dating, sleeping with, living with, that ain't none of your business. <laughs> I get women or men, because it's both ways when it comes to this, like, oh, she got a new boyfriend all around my kids, and uh-uh, he can't be there. You not? <laughs> that ain't your business are you paying the bills in that house no same with women it don't matter who he dated and moved on with you need to move on as long as your kid is not in danger and as long as they're in a loving environment it ain't your business 
like buy felicia get out of his business get out of her business and mind your own business your kid is your focus that's all that matter um you can't tell them who can be around their kid you can't tell them what to do in their household when you're not around you can't tell them any of that it's none of your business and it's not your right to do so period i don't care what anybody say nobody can control the other person's household that's just not realistic so you just gonna have to get over it boo <laughs> um another reason why you can't co-parent is because of a broken mindset oh this is supposed to be this way or some people but don't believe in co-parenting oh my god it's so weird that my son dad has four kids four moms four different states so everybody live everywhere and then he lives in a different place so when i go to my bonus kid i went to her graduation from elementary it was like last year maybe the year before last it was two years ago so i'm there her mom's there i surprised her with her dad because he lived in florida at the time so i was like okay i'm gonna bring him to california we're gonna show up to the graduation the mom her mom invited me because we all coexist and co-parent together i had the kids all his kids except for one so i had three of the kids one whole summer and me and him co-parented so he would have them four days i would have them three days and we co-parented with all his kids so i'm communicating with all the moms we all get along we all communicate we're all like one family um the kids are happy they love each other they have a relationship this is why i teach other people how to do it because it's possible the only difficult part is when you get around other people who have that broken mindset like is this a polygamy or stuff like that like he ain't never been with none of us in a relationship <laughs> but they think like why are you at the graduation and you're celebrating and y'all families together and or they come to your family events like this is weird because they're not used to seeing people function like regular normal human beings getting along and communicating and doing what's right for the kids people think it's so weird i remember her pastor was like you're her bonus mom and it's the dad and it's her mom it's her your son like they was like so shocked people think it's so weird they think we're like a polygamy family <laughs> <laughs> and it's not that way and it's so funny how people react to us getting along took all the kids to Disneyland so it was without their dad so me and all the moms and all the kids actually I was introducing two of the kids to each other because they never met so I had brought all four kids to Disneyland and their moms <laughs> so they could all meet and be able to know who each other is and stuff and it was like six years ago uh, when the youngest was about one um but they wanted to meet their new brother and so i was like we can all go to disneyland people was like shocked like how are you and all the baby mamas and the kids go to disneyland without their dad <laughs> it was so weird to them i think their dad was deployed um at the time but i don't remember where he was but he wasn't living in the same state i think he was living in mississippi at that time where he was stationed in the military so i'm like my kids are gonna know their siblings period i grew up like that my dad had a wife a girlfriend three baby mamas six kids two bonus kids <laughs> it was a lot of us <laughs> but we all got along together we would all go to family events and stuff so i grew up with that being the norm so that's why i'm able to teach other people how to do it because i didn't see the the drama like i didn't have to worry about oh can i go see my dad no it was he gonna have us every weekend <laughs> we was going to my dad's house with my stepmom and her kids and those are my brothers and still to this day we are grown we're in our 30s and those are still my brothers those we're all still close still can say hi or follow each other on social media all that so it's a normal thing and we need to make co-parenting normal again but having those limiting beliefs like it can't it's not possible it ain't gonna work it's only gonna be temporary that's a broken mindset and you really need to change your mind <laughs> change your life um changing your mindset will change your life period but that's all i got for you guys today i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to like share and subscribe until next time coach mo out